Welcome everybody to the cosplay workshop. So yeah. Yeah, we're here, we're here to see see. We're having fun, we're having funny cosplay, you can see a few cosplayers among us. We've got a couple of uh, what are they called again? Oh, onesies. 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 onesies, we've got some onesies, we've got a link cosplayer, we've got There we go. What? Yeah, we've got Yes! And I've got a picture of me with an ace attorney. Where is it? Yes, there we go. So there's me. Now, does anyone know who No, no, I'm not a Samuel Jackson fiction. Yeah, I'm Charles Winfield. So does anyone know who is the person who's dressed? As, does anyone recognise that guy dressed as a yeah, Sammy? Yeah, looks yeah. like Ricky Martin. It's Steve Martin. Steve it's from Steve 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 Steve. Uh, what, from sorry? Something from Persona or something. No, 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 no. Does anyone know who the real person is? Oh, Steve Steve Steve. No, not me. Who, does anyone recognise him? <laughs> okay, that's the uh, PR rep for Nintendo Australia. Whoa. So, that's, um, his that's name is Jeremy Wilson. Right. He's the most beautiful man in the universe. Oh, and he comes to things dressed up oh, as a oh, team. So, what that kind of can show you is that cosplay is becoming a really popular thing. So it's not just, um, you know, for the bastion of Star Trekkers back in the 60s, and it's not for the nerds of the 90s. Everybody is doing it now. It's a really cool thing to do. So it's also a good topic to kind of talk about. So um, I'm here because uh, my name's Kirsty. I'm a, a host of New Game Plus, the TV show, of course. You guys should know all about it, airing on Channel 31s on Monday nights. Represent. Work. The thing is, as well as I do love to cosplay, I actually wrote a thesis on cosplay. Um, I based it around Melbourne cosplayers and why they cosplay. So, one of my more famous cosplays is, of course, uh, Princess Daisy, as you could see from um, that's a closer upper version. So, I had blue eyes, which is good fun. So, Princess Daisy, and I've actually got the costume here as well. So, for you guys, I did, couldn't wear it because unfortunately, um, the neck piece and the earrings have disappeared. So I moved house three times since this photo was taken, so I've lost a lot of the jewellery, which is awkward. But I do have the dress here anyway, just if in case you guys wanted to talk about sewing, you know, what to do for sewing and choice of materials. So I think the Daisy cosplay is probably a very a good place to start. So the Daisy cosplay wasn't my first cosplay. Why is it so heavy? That's a good question. Yeah. So the Daisy costume uh, was not the first cosplay I ever did. The first cosplay uh, I've ever, I ever did, I actually don't really have any photos of it anymore. It was back in 2005. I was Tifa um, from Final Fantasy VII, but the Advent Children version. So I did it, and that was a really fun costume because I wanted to have a bit of fun with it. I mean, I don't think I was even 18 at the time. And I had put water balloons down my top <laughs> so, because I really wanted to, you know, the fact is, good time to walk in. The fact is that, you know, Tifa is kind of known for her comically large breasts in the old Final Fantasy VII game. So, that's what I did. So, I spent most of the convention running away from people who were trying to stab me with chopsticks to make them burst. <laughs> and that was a really fun experience. And it was also one of the first times I really, you know, got behind a sewing machine to build a costume. Of course, as we can see here, cosplays come in all different shapes and sizes. You can build a costume from scratch, which is what I did with Princess Daisy, or you can put a costume together, which is something I did with Jules Winfield. Now, Jules Winfield, I don't know, that was a costume for costume parties. I've also done um, Solid Snake. I don't know if there's a picture of me. Again, I apologise. I don't know if there's a... Oh, no, Solid Snake. So I was Solid Snake for uh, EB Expo 2011. Is that like it? Uh, no, but one story. Okay, so I was I was Solid Snake, and that was on the Sunday. I think I can't remember. I think this was on the Sunday. And what had happened was I was not the only Solid Snake at the convention. One of the guys who worked for Mindscape Games, who were the people that released Solid Snake uh, Metal Gear Solid in Australia, was also dressed up as Solid Snake. And we had, of course, you know, the full kind of military gear over the top. We had that AK, we had a few handguns, all replica, all above board. And um, Sunday morning before the convention started, a concerned uh, resident of the Gold Coast had called the police to say that they saw somebody going into the convention hall carrying weapons. And so the Gold Coast Convention Centre got swamped by SWAT teams. Like full-on riot gear swamped in looking for somebody with weapons. 
Uh, we then managed to smuggle this back into Victoria because this was in Queensland in our luggage because that, that was always a question you want to get asked at airport security. So this is a cosplay that was that was built from you know existing parts. So the top and the pants I purchased from uh, uh, what was that, that shop again? Army disposals. Aussie disposals. Aussie disposals. And I'd altered them though, so I'd sewn them because obviously they don't really make female fitting clothes. So I had to sew it in, um, you know, make it a little bit more fitted, and make the gloves, make some of the other accessories as well. So I guess what I'm trying to say is. I don't think there should be any kind of any kind of uh, prejudice against people and how they cosplay. If you want to make a cosplay and build it from existing parts, go ahead. If you want to go a different route and build it yourself from yards of material, do it as well. It's all about having fun. So it's, it doesn't matter how you get there. It's the fun you have when you get there, and the fun you have actually getting there as well. Um, making. Uh, as you could see by my first photo, when I made Princess Daisy, I actually made it uh, with a friend. This was a friend of mine called Sandra. We decided to do Prince, uh, Princess Daisy and Princess Peach because we both loved Mario games. She was also very pale and naturally blonde haired. That wasn't her natural hair, but she was naturally blonde haired. And I was a bit darker, a bit of a darker complexion. Uh, but we were like, well, what can we do together? So I went on the Princess Daisy of the Super Smash Brothers Melee series, which is where you choose a different colour of peach and Daisy is a little bit darker. So we built these costumes together. Now my dress, the yellow material alone was about nine metres of material, just to sew, and her dress was about the same. These dresses have a circumference, like the actual skirt, so if I can show you, are really, really big. Right, because it has to fit over a hoop skirt, which is I'll get into construction shortly. So I had to hem this, not once. So here's the hem for the yellow material. Then I had to hem the orange material, and I had two layers of orange material. The other thing we had to do, and then of course all the construction of the top. So we basically lived together for almost a week, trying to get these dresses sorted before it was yeah e games. No, Manifest, I think it was, 2007. Manifest. And it was Manifest, yes. So the fun of the construction really came about when we were doing that. So I was really good at sewing in a straight line, so I tended to do all of the hems. She actually custom built all of the jewellery you can see. She made the crowns, she made the neck, neck pieces, and she actually, we, all, we both had matching earrings. So we had the full set. She moulded that herself from Sculpey and resin casting. So that was actually a full resin um, gem that you can see hanging on our necks. So we had so much fun doing that. The other fun thing as well was we built our own hoop skirts. Because to get a skirt to sit like that is impossible without some mechanical assistance. So we built these from like original designs from the 1850s, I believe it was. Let me see. Oh, I found one shitty boot. Here we go. So this was really good fun to build. So this was the hoop skirt that we built. So to hoop, to actually build this, we had to sew channels for the hooping to go into. So we had three people sitting underneath this hoop skirt, pushing wire through the hoop. And that was really fun because we learned then that you can fit three people under this hoop skirt. So if we wanted to smuggle people into conventions, we suddenly, very quickly, had a very legitimate way to do this. So this literally just goes over your head, and then it's a little bit bent at the moment because I haven't used it in a while. Uh, and it just sits around you like that. And then we threw you the dresses on top and custom built the dresses to fit this hoop skirt. So this was, I guess, gets into the more mechanical side of cosplay building. So you may decide to choose a costume where you need to build something. So you can build, I mean, for me, it was hoop skirts. There are, of course, people that build weaponry, uh, people that build armour. And that's something uh, I'm a little bit chicken shit about, so I probably won't be doing that anytime soon. But So that's what we had to do to start making the costume. It was really fun because I had somebody to do it with. I think that's what made this cosplay in particular uh, so enjoyable because her and I spent a lot of time together building it. We then brought in our other friends, bless you, to build the crinolines with us. 
because I was likely living in an apartment at the time, so we had the option just to completely take over the house without madness. And I've still, still got so much material left over as well. So that's, it. that's how I kind of built this kind of dress design. Now, of course, building a dress like this, it can be very hard to build from scratch. So I, used, I had to go and acquire different kinds of patterns to make it happen. So I bought a couple of the patterns I used for this dress because I stole the skirt of this dress, which is a historical pattern that is no longer in existence, which is really sad. And then this was the pattern for my mother's wedding dress in 1987. My, my grandmother still had it. So I managed to borrow it off her and steal one of the necklines because the bodices were all the exact same design I needed. So acquiring patterns as well can be really helpful. Uh, not all of us are born dressmakers, so pinning things to dolls and making canvas versions is all a little bit beyond us. So I really recommend when Clegg's has their half price sales, when Spotlight has their half price sales, if you're interested in building dresses or anything really, start acquiring patterns because you will find them really useful in the future. Yeah, boys. Yeah. <laughs> there are guy costumes out there as well, like particularly for like night. There's a lot of night costumes, costumes like historical costumes as well. So you can find stuff there for, for guys as well. This is particularly for costumes like this, where there really isn't a pattern for a dress like this. I mean, I still made all the collar was done. You know, I made a paper outline, put it around my neck, and went, "Yep, this looks about right," and then built the collar from that. Same with the, the sleeves, you know, just deciding exactly how long the sleeves needed to be. Uh, designing this was also just a fact of working out, well, how do I want it to sit? And then how much material am I going to need to achieve this? So that's kind of how, I guess, this costume came together. And it is a really, really fun costume to wear. Um, I remember ca I've caught trams, trains, I've caught everything in this dress. And the look on people's faces when they see you in it, they just don't know who, a lot of them don't know who you are. I mean, nobody really remembers Princess Daisy, it's not the forgotten person. But they think you're a fairy or a princess, and they treat you the same way, and that's really, really nice. The other thing I really liked about this costume was the fact that, yes, I got to be blue-eyed for a day. So, no, that was, oh yeah, there's no, there was another picture of me with a no face. <laughs> So I love No Face. This is actually an old um, a uni friend of mine. I didn't realise it was her and then we kind of got talking. So that's the other thing about this costume and I guess about uh, cosplay in general. If you're going to go for something like this, prepare to be very uncomfortable. Uh, a lot of cosplay, cosplays, these kind of dresses were not meant to be comfortable. Um, for this outfit, I wore a full bone corset. Um, so I was unable to bend. Uh, which was pretty funny because I was getting stopped every two metres for photos. So you just learn to kind of, you know, pull the right pose and not move and also generally have a bag person. So get another person, a friend or another attendee to carry your bag for you because most of the time you won't be able to carry your own bags. You also, you know, you don't have to do like I did and catch the train in your costume because of course that means you get caught in doors, you get dirty, you can get harassed. So, you know, just kind of deciding what, what's kind of right for you. I got really harassed in another cosplay of mine. Should I show you them? Go yeah, on. all right. So, the costume I've been most harassed in is Elvira. Let me see, this one. Oh, oh. So, I was Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, not Booberella, <laughs> not, not Morticia Adams. I was initially going to be Morticia Adams, but then I changed my mind at the last minute and became Elvira. So this is a costume that was really fun to make because, again, it's, it's quite, it was quite simple. The reason I chose it was it was a very simple outfit. I didn't wear it because I didn't think it was appropriate, but it was just a simple dress that was specifically tailored in certain areas. I think I turned this around in two days. So it was just about kind of choosing, you know, a dress that I thought was quite easy to make, I me mean, little kind of jagged edges down the bottom. The other fun thing about this dress was the makeup, because you can't really tell, I don't know if that's, that's a bit closer up, if she has really intense makeup. Daisy didn't really have intense makeup. I think there might be, no, there's a picture of it, but I've got a, I think I've got a cider in my hand, so I won't show that one. 
So she's got really intense makeup. Daisy didn't. Daisy, I needed blue eyes, so I had to wear contacts. Whereas Elvira was entirely, literally spent about 20 minutes trying to draw these incredible lines around my eyes and then colouring it in with some really intense like pinks and blues, which was really, really fun. So this was, uh, again, a really simple cosplay and a, a really fun cosplay. And also my nails, I don't know if you can see, my nails were literally that long. I wore fake nails that came out to here. I couldn't use my phone. It was ridiculous. Again, being in cosplay, don't necessarily be prepared to be comfortable because it generally just does not happen. What other cosplays do I have in here? Oh, yeah, this was one um, I did. This was Belle. This was based heavily on Daisy. It was actually made by a friend of mine, which might didn't fit me very well. But she'd stolen my hoop skirt and she said, right, I'm going to make a cosplay that will fit both of us. You've done the hoop skirt already, so I'm going to do the dress itself. And this one was, again, really fun. She'd chosen a material that was a little bit kind of duller because she didn't want to be shiny like this, because this is an incredibly kind of shiny material. But, and also the dress was a bit too long. I think she's a bit taller than me, so I was constantly tripping over myself, and that was a bit awkward. So just be careful, again, you know, of making kind of cosplays. When making cosplays, I guess this is when making a cosplay is sometimes better than buying a cosplay. Work to what fits you. Make sure that the cosplay fits well, because if you're going to be wearing this all day at a convention, having lots of photos taken, you want to be as comfortable as possible. So I've got a dressmaking doll, so I'm likely enough that I'm able to kind of work to my own shape by making a doll to my own shape. But this is where family or friends can really help out. It also makes a world of difference. There's nothing more awkward than seeing, you know, someone who's trying to dress up as Belle, for example, where the dress doesn't fit well, it just looks awkward, and then you feel self-conscious as well as a cosplayer. So take pride in what you're doing, which most cosplayers do. So that's, I guess that's the fun of if being able to do it on your own. Uh, that, yeah, that was Belle. All right, what else did I have? What other cosplayers did I have? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, 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 that, that was boring. The other thing, um, I'll just say, I'll just stay on this one for now. The other thing about cosplay, I guess, is work to your strengths as well when you're making a cosplay. So again, not all of us are born dressmakers. Not all of us are going to be able to be, you know, talented with material or talented with things. So if you're good at making weapons, choose a character that you, you know, you enjoy their weapons or you want to make their weapons for. The great other great thing about cosplay is there's a really strong community around it. So as I said, I worked with a friend on Princess Peach and Princess um, Daisy, and because she was a good jewellery maker and I was a good dressmaker, we were able to make a matching pair of dresses that we thought turned out quite good. So even if you, it's not necessarily somebody you know, but you may find somebody in the community who is willing to help you to achieve a group cosplay. So if you want to, say, do the Sailor Scouts, you may have someone in your group that's really good at tailoring, then you'll have someone in your group that might be really good at making weapons. So you can really, you know, go into and explore the areas that you explore in being creative. So that's an another fun thing as well. And also, set yourself a realistic goal. There's, it, you know, some of us, all of us would love to do some of the really more intense costumes. You know, all of us would love to be able to build a fully functional Kirby or, you know, a fully functional Roy from Super Smash Bros. Melee, you know, where there's a lot of detailed armour. You don't need to go out so flashy. You don't need to start so big. I mean, I did Princess Daisy because I thought it's a simple dress. It's not that much detail on the dress. It's literally just yards and yards of material. The most difficult thing was constructing the hoop skirt, but I've then gone on to make more historical costumes and bell from it, so the hoop skirt has come in handy afterwards. So you don't need to go, you know, balls to the wall to be, you know, a good cosplayer. I was just as popular as Princess Daisy as I has, have been as of any other character. The next character I want to create is Aveline from Assassin's Creed Liberation, and I'm going to be hopefully creating her for PAX. So I uh, have a lot of work to do when I get home tonight because I have to die about four metres of material, but let, let's not talk about that. That's, I don't want to think about that right now. But, um, the other, yeah, so that's what I, you know, just think about what you really enjoy doing and how you can make that work for your cosplay. There are plenty of cosplay groups on Facebook. 
There are plenty of cosplay, you know, cosplay forums and cosplay websites as well. You can find people who are interested in what you like doing and how to and how you can do it. Now, one of the areas that has kind of come up. Um, you know, recently in cosplays, this idea of, you know, uh, photography. So people taking photos of you. Some cosplayers feel harassed when they're taking photos of. I think you need to just kind of bear in mind that you wearing that costume, you kind of become almost public property at that point because everybody wants to engage with you but may not necessarily know how to engage with you short of taking a photo of you. So I've had plenty of people, I mean, there's, I found photos of me as Solid Snake from two years ago on Facebook that I didn't know existed. Because it just happened, they didn't tell me that they were taking photos, they just took the photos. But I don't take that as an insult, you know, I don't feel that everybody needs to come up and ask me to take a photo. Because I understand that, you know, they just want to take a photo so they can remember how happy they felt or how excited they felt when they saw the character I'm wearing. So as cosplayers yourself, just remember that not everybody may understand your need for personal boundaries, but if you are you know, upset with the way someone's treating you, of course confront them about it. You know, Nobody should ever be harassed, it doesn't matter what you're wearing. I caught the tram in Elvira once and that was a fun experience. But again, I put myself in that situation, I had a jacket, I'm pretty sure I had a jacket. But you know, that was a fun experience. But doing it as Princess Daisy or Princess Belle was really fun because so many kids, the looks on their faces were so intense. And when somebody actually guessed who I was and you know remembered and started talking to me about how much they loved Daisy, that was really good too. Actually, one of my crowning glory moments of Princess Daisy, where is she? Daisy close. Oh yeah, that's the full one. Okay. One of the best moments I ever had as Princess Daisy was I managed to get into the launch, the official VIP launch party for the Nintendo Wii in Australia. Awesome. I got in there because I knew some of the people who were, I know some of the people who work at Nintendo, and then I knew some of the people who worked at EB Games, Swanson Street. Was it the launch of the Nintendo Experience or the Wii? I can't remember. And I went in my costume and I told them that I'm part of the entertainment. I'm in a daisy dress, I'm part of the entertainment, and they lit me up. So I was sitting up there drinking, you know, eating their food and drinking their drinks and, and mixing with all of these kind of famous people from Nintendo because I said I was Princess Daisy and I was the entertainment. So cosplay can also open you up to a whole new world of opportunities and, you know, absolutely broaden your horizons. I mean, I've been offered work because of my cosplay. I've obviously done my thesis on cosplay. I teach it. I do it so much. Yeah? I'm just curious from a cosplay perspective. Yeah. Guys, guys. How much did it cost you, like, in regards to, like, you know, requiring fabrics and stuff? Okay. Yeah, that was, that. I was going to say, Princess Daisy, it was all up, I think, 11 metres of material I needed to make this dress. The material, this was, we chose this material because we were interested in a slightly shiny look rather than a matte look because some princesses, some of the princess dresses I've seen have been like a cotton or a velvet or something, but we wanted something shiny because in Super Mario World 2, which is where we got the bell shape, we wanted the Super Mario World 2 bell shape, we decided to go with dancers and I think it was about 7 or $8 dollars a metre back then. So the corset was $185, the material was I think close to $130, we had to ship in the boning from Adelaide because you can't buy that in stores anymore. And that was about $70. So the princess said, plus wigs, gloves. Um, I actually never paid for any of the resin, but these, this cosplay probably cost me about, or it would have cost me about, you know, if I split some of the cost with my friend, probably about four to $500 for this cosplay. Oh. But again, the hoop skirt was a lot of that because of the boning. And that was really good value because in the end, I've used that hoop skirt again for other cosplays. So there's a, you know, 80 to $100 burden that I've then taken on and used in other things. But you've used the daisy dress. And I've used the daisy dress. Like I've won, I won a Wii and games in the daisy dress. I've won, um, I've won a few prizes in that dress as well. So the money that I may have initially outlaid was then recouped, you know, in prizes and also just in, in the notoriety of it as well, getting into the Nintendo parties and stuff like that. I'm also um, constantly approached by EB Games and by Nintendo um, to appear at events as Princess Daisy. I'm invited to appear at events as Princess Daisy because it's a very recognisable Nintendo character 
And it's also really, really good fun. I, lo I love the blue eyes part. I love having blue eyes. I've got boring brown eyes normally, so to actually have blue eyes and to do the full makeup and then, hi, I'm Daisy, just constantly, is actually like a real lot of fun. Some of my other cosplays have been a lot cheaper. I think Elvira was probably only around, I had to buy shoes and wigs and stuff. That was probably only about $100. I do know of cosplayers who spent up to a grand, if not more, because they've done building weaponry, building armor. When you're getting into resin casting, when you're getting into plaster casting and molds, that is when the cost can really go up. Um, also different kinds of materials. So the material, some of the material I've seen for some of my cosplays, you know, it's $19 a meter. And when I'm making a dress this big, this costs quickly go up. So this is where perhaps building a cosplay from little bits and pieces may, you may find more helpful and more in your budget and more in your range of that. Uh, were there, what, was there anything else? Did any, was there anything else anybody really wanted to hear about cos, like cosplay? Like how, I mean, this dress took me about seven days in total. I'm talking seven full days. I remember not sleeping much to build this costume. Um, I, you know, I've built other uh, costumes as well that have not been cosplays that I've just done for the fun of it. So just to help get my skills up so when I can go back to cosplay where you get, you know, this one didn't have so much detail but other cosplays have much more intricate detail, I can work better on it. Yeah? How about wigs? Like wigs? Oh yeah. I was going to bring in this wig. I don't, no, I've got a slightly different wig actually now. That was a different wig. Styling wigs is really tricky. It's about finding a good quality wig. Uh, most of the wigs you buy from party shops and costume hire places, when you buy them and they're less than probably 30 or 50 dollars, they're generally pretty crappy and I would avoid them at most costs. Um, case in point, my Princess Peach, her first wig was a crappy store-bought, um, oh, I should stop swearing, was a poor store-bought wig and she tried to style it curling on, you know, using the curlers and stuff like that, and it just didn't work. My wig, the wig I'm wearing in this image was a $70, $70 wig and came pre-curled, so that's why I bought it. But then my second wig I bought was about uh, $30 to $40 purchased online, and I managed to curl it myself. Wigs are a bit strange about how you style them. I mean, I, was, I can see, you know, Phoenix right up in the corner has got quite styled hair. You know, it gets, it can get very, very difficult. Generally, Using heat, you know, like using a straightening iron or a curling iron doesn't really work because it, particularly if you get a wig that's less than $200, it's generally not natural fibre. It's generally like polyester or something else and they just melt. Um, I would you stick with hairspray. When you're, when you're um, modelling wigs, get the old-fashioned grippy curlers. That's how I managed to get a flick in my new wig, which is very similar to this wig. As I put it in curlers overnight, so I, I pinned everything into curlers, sprayed it with a bit of spray, and then left it overnight, and then gently took it out, and then whenever it was in storage, I put them back into the curlers. Because it's made of like plastic fibres, it moulds very easily. There are a lot of wig styling tips online as well, so when you are working with wigs, you know, I've found buying wigs online on eBay, there are now a lot of cosplay specific wig stores as well. And they're generally good quality and of course have reviews written on them. So I don't have a specific wig store I use. I actually try to like, I like buying a lot of my cosplay stuff locally. I like to buy almost everything from a store if I can. And there is a wig shop I've gone to next to Victoria Markets in um, Carlton, is it? There's a wig store out there and I found their wigs have been really good, even for just general wigs. I've been really happy with their quality. So I'm going to go back there to get my wig for my next costume. Because obviously having it in your hand and, and looking at it and holding it, you might, you know, because if you, you know, you're concerned about how it's going to turn out, you'll be able to get a better idea from that. Yeah, you? Um, where do you get your How do you make sure it's like Now, the, the contacts I wore in this picture, I had purchased from one of those kind of, oh my gosh, I touched something. Okay, nothing happened. Um, they, they came from a store in Melbourne Central, which was like a joke shop, like a uh, What's New. Remember that old store, What's New? They were selling them. Um, the other ones I bought, the other, cos the other um, ones I bought were from, I believe it was from a market. I've never purchased them online because, again, I'm a bit wary with online. You just don't know where they're coming from. So uh, you can, like a lot of these kind of uh, contacts tend to have, you know, 
uh, certification. Some of them have certification from certain bodies, but it is it is a risk that you take. Uh, generally, I purchase it from stores that have existed for a while. So, what's new? I know that's a, a bricks and mortar store. If something goes wrong, I know the company. Um, there's stores at markets that are consistently there. Generally, as long as I have some kind of contact information attached to those contacts, so then you can follow up if there is an issue. But you know, obviously, I was lucky to go from brown to blue pretty easily as well. Sometimes the colours can be a bit strange, so just keeping in mind, depending on the colour of your eyes, may affect the colour of the outcome. Yep. Yeah, I've got, I've actually got a really like a, a, a long dark haired wig that goes down to my hips. And I, uh, I bought it from a specific wig shop, like where they sold human hair wigs. And I asked and said, how should I store this? And she said, you can put it in a box if you like. So if the wig is not styled, if it's a long straight wig, as far according to this woman, as long as you put it in a box and use detangling sprays and, you know, keep it out of sunlight, the wig will store quite well. If your wig is styled, I guess it depends how you styled it. Um, as with my daisy wig, because I use curlers, I also put the curlers back in to reset it. So the next time when I grabbed the wig, I could remove the curlers and then the wig would be perfectly styled every time. So, but generally i found, as long as you get a box big enough, even for curly haired wigs, and you sit the, you know, the wig in where the curls are able to join back together like a spring, and just leave it and sit it down, you're not going to lose curl, keep it out of sunlight so it doesn't fade, and you, your wig should be fine for quite a while after that. Yeah? Um, how effective is using um, styrofoam for armaments? Styrofoam is really good because it's easy to mould with. Like, there's some incredible things you can kind of, you know, create with styrofoam in terms of carving shapes out and everything. Uh, in terms of durability, uh, maybe not so much. Uh, there are, you know, a lot of plasticine options on the market available to you now. I mean, 3D printing is starting to get really big too, so we'll soon be able to 3D print a lot of our armour. I guess they just, you know, always test it first. So always do a trial, you know, like a trial shoulder plate first. But styrofoam is a good starting point, if nothing else. So use styrofoam as the base and then cover it with another material, another kind of plastic or another kind of mould. Does styrofoam resin... Yeah. So there's other more like solid kind of things, but styrofoam's a really good, you know, support and then you put the final finish kind of covering on top of it and it works yeah. really nicely. I'm just asking because I'm thinking of um, my project for the next year will be sort of making a um, space for me. Yeah. Yeah, nice. So nice. Nice. Yep. Yeah. Um, Shh, guys. I've been planning out um, a design for one of my original characters on mm -hmm. the yeah. What would be your like recommendation for it? Well, you can actually I've actually got a pattern for a fursuit. I bought it for a party ages ago. So you can buy patterns for those kind of, you know, like like the Pikachu outfit you're wearing, but where you would use fur instead. So I would recommend seeking out patterns. So as I, you know, as I said, I've been I use a mismatch mishmash of patterns to build my costumes. You know, oh well, the sleeves can come from this pattern, you know, for the skirt, oh, well, that's about the same as this skirt in terms of the size I'm looking for, because this pattern was specifically to fit over the hoop skirt. Um, you know, I would recommend looking into patterns and just having, you know, finding the, the first suit patterns and kind of go, okay, well, then I'm going to, you know, that's kind of the size I'm looking for. The actual final designs will be slightly different. Um, or even getting, like, onesie patterns as well, because if you're going for that kind of... I guess it depends how, I guess, form-fitting the, the fursuit will be, whether it's going to be loose. You know, there's so many costuming, like, even general costuming patterns out there. You should be able to find something that can set you on the right track. There's one up the back. Yeah, up the back. Yeah, sorry. Shh. That's the dangerous part. So washing a cosplay... I've have I ever washed I've washed this once in however many years, but I've only worn it about five or six times. Um, I hand wash this um, because again the material was very much a hand wash kind of material. It took me hours to iron. Oh my gosh, it this is not an ironable dress. So because of this material, it was hand washed. Generally for all cosplays, hand wash only. I actually have 
a costume I built. This was not a cosplay, it was not for a specific um, costume, but I built that dress and I washed the top. And you can't, I don't know, it's a bit hard to see, but there's a white lace trim around everything. And I just went, you know what, I need to wash the top of this dress. I'm just going to throw it in the washing machine. I'm just going to oh. throw it in the... Um, I, no, I think I, I soaked it in a bucket of water. And there's actually a faint uh, tartan design that's kind of shiny and it's white. that's striped throughout it. Yeah. What happened was the red leaked. So now the lacing and the white tartan design has actually leaked. So it's now pink rather than red. So it's always a danger you're going to face with your cosplays, particularly if you've built it, like spilt it from scratch, is be prepared to not wash it as often as your normal clothes. And if you are going to wash it, do some research into the kind of materials you've used and how things about you know, leakage, also shrinking. Things can shrink in the wash as well. So you just gotta be careful, you know, about exactly your cosplay may completely change if you do wash it. So, you know, spot stain removing will be, you know, quite good if you spill something on it. I know a friend, you know, I didn't eat. You don't eat in a cosplay like this, because if I spill tomato sauce on this dress, I would kill myself. Because it's like I just spent a week building this and I've completely destroyed it by eating a sandwich or by eating a roll. So I just don't I just don't eat, don't do anything dirty, don't think dirty thoughts, think clean thoughts, keep the jams away, you know, because cosplay is something you generally, it's something special, so you should only be wearing it, you know, on special occasions. But cosplay is like this, yeah? One more question. Okay, uh, I've got one more question. Yep. Uh, so you have a costume malfunction yep. like in the middle of a convention or something. What advice can you give to help rectify it? Carry a, carry a mini sewing kit. They were all the rage up until about 10 years ago. You can still buy them at Safeways where you get like a needle and a bunch of different threads and a tiny pair of scissors. Always carry around something like that so you can do emergency patch-ups. I mean, even now, if I was to be wearing um, Prince this one, you can see that the boning is broken. So if I was wearing this outfit, I would be carrying around masking tape because that's how I would have fixed it. I'd be carrying around yellow and orange thread, needles and a small pair of fabric scissors. So always be prepared. Bring tape uh, for girls. If you're wearing a cosplay, you know that you need it to sit a certain way in certain areas, even guys, Hollywood tape. That stuff is amazing and it doesn't hurt to peel off. Bring touch up makeup. Bring, yes, yeah, scissors material you know not material necessarily but yeah just always be prepared because the problem is particularly at conventions they're so busy that people will always accidentally step on your dress they will bump into you they will you know grab something something will go wrong so always be prepared for minor things like that but the good thing is as well because the community is generally i'm wrapping up um because the community is generally so kind of inviting and so happy to see you taking part in it, other cosplayers will be happy to help you as well. So other cosplayers, if they can, they'll be like, oh, don't worry, I've got this back at the booth or I've got this over here, let me help you. So you should, you'll never feel unwelcome doing cosplay. So um, thanks very much, guys. If you have any more questions, I'll take it outside. <laughs> but it's not